Tonight, new Edward Snowden revelations, including Monster Mind, the NSA bot that could wage cyber war. And are you ready for 512K Day? You might have already missed it. Amazon launches a credit card reader and a lot more. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 150 for Wednesday, August 13th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like cinnamon swirl kettle kernels. You never know what I'm going to say. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. According to a new claim by Edward Snowden in a lengthy interview with Wired, the National Security Agency accidentally brought down Syria's internet back in 2012 after a failed attempt to hack into the country's communications data. Snowden says the NSA agents tried to exploit a core router of a major ISP in order to tap into Syria's emails and the plan backfired. He says at the time, Syrians were more focused on restoring the internet throughout the nation, then tracking the outage back to the NSA. Syria President Bashar al-Assad's government has occasionally turned off internet services in specific areas before launching an attack, according to the Washington Post. So it's not entirely clear which blackout Snowden is referencing. The NSA did not immediately respond to a request for comment regarding his potential involvement. Oh, but that's not all. Edward Snowden also says the NSA is developing a cyber defense system that would instantly and autonomously neutralize foreign cyber attacks against the U.S. and could also be used to launch retaliatory strikes. The program is called Monster Mind, made up of algorithms that would scour huge repositories of metadata and then analyze that data to separate normal network traffic from anomalous or malicious traffic, which the NSA could then use to identify and block a foreign threat. For example, Monster Mind could identify a distributed denial of service attack against a U.S. banking system or a malicious worm designed to garble an airline system and then stop it before it does any harm. However, some issues with this, Snowden says, says that spotting these malicious attacks this way would require the NSA to collect and analyze all network traffic flows in order to design an algorithm that could distinguish normal traffic from malicious traffic. The NSA has also not responded to questions about the Monster Mind program. Huge surprise. If you noticed any network disruptions or outages yesterday, you could have blamed 512K, which is an issue where the growth of routable networks on the internet overwhelms the amount of memory that's set aside in infrastructure hardware like routers and switches that decides how to route data through the internet. As Ars Technica explains it, quote, for the first time, the lists of routable networks that are also called border gateway protocol or BGP tables surpassed a significant power of two, two to the 19th power or 512K. Many older routers limit their use of a specialized and expensive type of memory known as ternary content addressable memory or TCAM to 512K by default. When the tables outgrew the space allotted for them, the routers shut down or slowed. So this is basically an issue of just bad old hardware. Hosting provider Liquid Web pointed to the 512K issue via a tweet that read, as ISPs have recovered from hashtag 512K, active BGP routes being reached, many of our customers affected by these carrier issues have regained the ability to reach their sites. Yes. Password service LastPass said it possibly blamed 512K, at least in part, for some interruptions in its service. Other outages were reported by eBay, Comcast, and Time Warner. Samsung has finally officially introduced the Galaxy Alpha, a premium handset with a metal frame at an event in Russia, which is going to be the first market where consumers will be able to pre-order the phone. The Galaxy Alpha is the thinnest phone in the Galaxy line, has a 4.7 inch screen, 
putting it on par with the upcoming iPhone 6 if those rumors end up panning out anyway. The Alpha also has a fingerprint reader just like the Galaxy 5S, but it is not water resistant. It runs Android 4.4.4 KitKat with TouchWiz, has two gigabytes of RAM, a 12 megapixel rear camera, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, and a price set at $689, which is roughly equivalent to about 24,990 rubles off contract. Pre-orders are open now for a September 12th release date. Spotify has partnered with a band page in an event, an effort to give fans new purchasing experiences beyond the norm of t-shirts and stickers and vinyl records, such as exclusive online concert options. So, for example, you could pre-order an album and get access to the iHeartRadio concert video stream where the artist is performing songs from his or her new album for the first time. Or perhaps pre-order a copy of the record and you receive an email with a link and unique code to access the stream when it airs. Jay Sider, who's the founder and CEO for Bandpage, tells CNET that over 1,000 of these types of experiences are now available for purchase via Spotify. Coming up, the story behind a photo of Edward Snowden and former NSA director Michael Hayden wearing tuxedos together in happier times. And up next, I'll chat with Ben Rubin from CNET about Amazon's new credit card reader and how they might be taking on the big guys like PayPal and Square. But first, if you're wanting to snack and you want to be guilt-free about it, you should really try NatureBox. NatureBox snacks have zero trans fats, no high fructose corn syrup ever, nothing artificial at all. NatureBox sends great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Here's how it works. You click on the continue button at naturebox.com and choose between three subscription options. Then you place your order. As a member, you select which snacks you'd like in your monthly box. You can select by dietary needs and also the kind of snacks you like. Maybe you're a savory person. Maybe you've got a sweet tooth. Maybe you like spicy stuff. That's me. With NatureBox, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Sriracha roasted cashews. Leo and I had a few of those the other day. Chili munch mix. Over 100 healthy snacks to choose from. I must say, we here at Twit have NatureBox all over the place. And often that is my entire lunch because they're delicious. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to NatureBox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Ben Rubin, staff writer over at CNET. Hello, Ben. Hey, how's it going? It's going really well. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. You've got an article today. Sure, of course. Uh, come back anytime. You've got an article today. Uh, Amazon takes on Square with local register card reader. So what is this? And how does it rival what Square is already offering? So um, basically the uh, folks at Amazon decided that they were ready to come out with a mobile device card reader. So if there is a local retailer that wants to put a card reader on their uh, smartphone or their uh, tablet, they can now do that using Amazon's system. Uh, it goes up against Square and also eBay's PayPal uh, unit also has a similar offering along with a bunch of other companies that they're trying to do this to gain a uh, foothold in the rapidly growing space of card readers, mobile payments, that kind of thing. Do you think, uh, do you think Amazon is looking to convince uh, smaller merchants to switch from either a Square or a PayPal card reader they might already be using? Or are they trying to target uh, part of the market that doesn't already use this? I, I would probably say that they're probably trying to gain from their competitors, which would be from uh, Square and eBay. They're, they're starting off with this promotional um, amount of money where it, for every single swipe, it would be slightly less than you would actually be paying at Square or eBay. Mm. So that might be a way for them to gain some additional customers. Uh, after what is it, January 1st, 2016, it gets a little bit closer to what Square and um, PayPal actually have. But I, I think they're all probably vying for the same types of customers, which are the food cart vendors, the different local mom and pop shops, all these different folks that are starting to use mobile payments, which one would expect uh, eventually Walmart and Target are also could potentially end up getting into these types of card readers as well. If Amazon can undercut Square and undercut PayPal, 
why would any merchant not go with Amazon unless they, for some reason, had you know an issue with the UI? It, so that's a really good question. And I think that um, something that one could point to relating to that would be that in many ways, Amazon is a competitor for a lot of these specific retailers. For instance, if somebody is selling... I don't know, stuffed animals or, uh, you know, mason jars or something like that is very likely that Amazon with its um, th thousands or however many products that they have on their website, well, they've got it too. And oftentimes they do try to undercut folks on their price. So it's possible that Amazon is selling it and selling it for less on Amazon.com. Why wouldn't Amazon, I don't know, buy Square, for example? Obviously, Square's got... Uh, brand recognition. Uh, you see certainly square dongles on, uh, I do anyway, a lot of local merchants, smaller merchants, cafes, that sort of thing. Why, mm. you know, Amazon can undercut them, but they're obviously having to build their own hardware. Why not partner with one of the companies that already exist? Partnering could be an interesting idea, but I think trying to actually purchase Square outright could be very difficult, even for somebody like Amazon. The last valuation that I've seen relating to Square that's been out there publicly was about $5 billion, which granted, that doesn't mean that Amazon couldn't afford that per se, but that's a lot of money. And um, for that kind of money, uh, it's certainly possible that Amazon could end up deciding that they just want to build their own network for uh that kind of cash. I mean, $5 billion will get you a long way and will buy a lot of potential customers and a lot of advertisements. Um, so for the time being, I think Amazon is interested in controlling its own system as opposed to partnering up. And uh, also maybe Square is um, a little expensive at this point, even though um, they've had their own complications and they're having some uh, uh, profit problems as a company. So Amazon's local register card reader uh, works on iPhones, Android phones, the Kindle Fire. What about the new Amazon Fire phone? This would seem like a no-brainer. So apparently, this was this was noted to me by one of your producers that apparently the Fire Phone um, is not on the list at this point. I found that rather surprising, and one would assume that that's just an oversight at this point that that Fire Phone will eventually be added in because the Amazon App Store is uh, one of the app stores that's, that um, this this app is available in. So I, I would expect that the Fire Phone is going to be added in. Uh, fairly shortly, it, it would seem rather strange to not include the Fire Phone um, in, in a product that includes um, so many of the other uh, Amazon systems. Do you worry, well, maybe not personally, but do you think Square uh, and even PayPal, which obviously is, is huge, should be worried uh, if Amazon comes in even late to the game with something that is maybe priced more attractively and gives uh, 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 better rates to merchants. You know, it's, it's kind of like killing the bookstore. It's the same idea. You know, if Amazon wants something, uh, it's, it's, it can be hard to compete because it's such a retail giant. Yeah. So, Sarah, yeah, I'm not I'm not personally worried, of course, <laughs> but um, I, I, I think that you're right in that um, anytime Amazon comes into a market, it's it's a problem for whoever is already in that market. They really um, one of their major MOs is that they do try to undercut on pricing. And so they are doing that here and there is a potential for them to gain additional customers by doing so. Um, but this is a really competitive space. I think Amazon has a pretty strong lock in e-retail in certain areas. They've done a really effective job in eating Barnes and Noble's lunch at this point and um, really hurting the uh, brick and mortar bookstore. But at the same time, this is not something that will immediately be handed to Amazon at all. There are a ton of companies that are already in this space. eBay has very deep pockets. Square has a lot of potential and, you know, still has a high valuation, which means that they could continue to raise money. So I would I would not think that this is something that Amazon, just by showing up, will immediately end up, you know, gaining a, a major foothold in the market. It's entirely likely that, you know, a year from now, two years from now, with all the different um, programs that Amazon is doing, they might decide to scrap this one if it doesn't actually work out. Ben Rubens, a staff writer over at CNET. Thanks so much for joining us, Ben. Much appreciated. And Thanks. let folks know where they can keep up with your work. 
Uh, they can follow me on Twitter at Ben Fox Rubin. And um, that's probably that's where I post a lot of my stuff. So that's an easy way to um, check me out. Excellent. Ben Fox Rubin on Twitter. And thanks so much for being here, Ben. Thanks. All right. Earlier in the show, we talked about Edward Snowden's latest revelation dump, if that's what you want to call it, which you can assume is not music to anyone's ears at the NSA, which makes a photo of Snowden and former NSA director Michael Hayden smiling in tuxedos at a unmentioned 2011 gala of some kind. All the more odd. Seems like there were happier times back then. Hayden has called Snowden a morally arrogant defector and a troubled young man, according to the Washington Post. In an article Hayden wrote for CNN, he said of Snowden, quote, it takes a special kind of arrogance for this young man to believe that his moral judgment suddenly trumps that of two presidents, both houses of the U.S. Congress, both political parties, the U.S. court system, and more than 30,000 of his co-workers. No love lost there. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That is tomorrow on all weekdays. That's Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.